Hello, students of statics. This is Dr. Dan Baker, and today we're going to be talking about cross products. Now, cross products are going to be leading into talking about moments or torque, and so we'll get to that in the next video. But for now, let's talk about this math tool, which is cross products. You may remember when we talked about dot products that I mentioned that there's two different ways to multiply vectors. One is a dot product. Dot products find the amount of one vector parallel to another, and then a cross product finds out how much of one vector is perpendicular to the other. Okay, so that's one of the main differences, dot products to cross products. Another is the output. Okay, so if we have vector A and we dot that with vector B, we can still look at an angle between these two vectors. Let's call this angle here angle theta. And so in vector notation, we can write that A vector crossed with B vector. Now, one of the forms of this answer is the magnitude or length of A times the magnitude or length of B times the sine of the angle between them. You may remember from dot products, that was the cosine. But then we have this unit vector, u hat. Now, this unit vector is where things get a little bit complicated because what we run into with cross products is that this unit vector turns out to be perpendicular to both of these vectors. Okay, there is my unit vector. And so we're saying it's perpendicular to both B and also A. So you can think that if B and A are in the plane of the screen, then U is coming straight toward you. Okay, now its direction is determined by the right hand rule. So let me write these things kind of together. So this unit vector U is a unit vector perpendicular to both A and B with its direction from the right hand rule. Now, the way I often will think about the right-hand rule is using what I think of as the slide and curl method. And in order to do the right-hand rule in this direction, I think it's easiest to put vectors um, tip to tail instead of tail to tail. So if we took vector B and I basically drew it over here, creating a parallelogram, so there is B vector, and I wanna cross A into B. You can think about sliding your fingers. So if I think about sliding my hand, I'll draw my right hand, my thumb, my pinky. Okay, so I'm sliding my fingers along A. And then you need to rotate your wrist so that you can curl your fingers. So this is like the back of my hand. Now if I draw uh, the top of it, I'm gonna have my wrist and my fingers curled around in this direction right here. And my right thumb will be coming up. All right, so there's my wrist and my thumb is pointing upwards. And so basically I'm saying that A crossed into B because I've slid my fingers along A, curled them into B, I get positive from the right hand rule. And if we did this the other way around and crossed um, B into A, I could draw that actually up here on this leg. And so I'll call this A, I'll call this A prime and B prime just because I have moved their lines of action. So that if I, if I cross B into A and so you slide your fingers along B, right? So slide and then curl them into A. Curl them into A is basically talking about that if, if A you think of as like a force vector, it's pushing your fingers around, then your hand, your, your right hand would look like this and they're gonna curl in this direction here. Now, if you curl your fingers in that direction I've shown, your thumb on your right hand needs to be going down into the board. Okay, so your thumb is hidden down there underneath and it's pointing down. So either into the board or the screen, however you think about that. And that is how I do the slide and curl method. You can take a look at your textbook. It discusses in more detail the three finger method. It's actually not one that I use very commonly. 
but do figure out one solid technique to do a cross product. And that's kind of, I talk about a manual cross product in order to determine the sign, the direction um, of a moment and or the direction of a cross product as we're talking about right here, okay? So that's the idea of its direction from a right-hand rule. And one of the ways that we can apply this is we are going to cross our unit vectors i hat j hat and k hat now hopefully you remember if i draw these in a right hand coordinate system uh, we could write this is i hat and if i hat is going to the right we could draw j hat going up if we assume both these are in the plane of the page crossing i hat into j hat always gives us a positive k hat and you remember, as we talked about in chapter two, that this is how we defined a right-hand coordinate system, right? That x crossed into y, so x axes, y axes, and z axes, that x crossed into y is always a positive z. Now, another way that we could draw this is with what I call a cross product circle, and that would look like this. If I have i hat, I like drawing it in a positive right-hand rule direction, so I would put j hat there and k hat here. So if I go around the circle in the positive right-hand rule direction, this would be a positive. So I hat into J hat is a positive K hat. K hat into I hat is a positive J hat and so forth. And if I go in the opposite direction, which would be negative from the right-hand rule. So a K hat, sorry, an I hat into a K hat is negative, a K hat into a J hat is negative, and a J hat into an I hat is negative. Okay, so I call that a right hand rule circle or a unit vector circle as you're thinking about that. So either one of these techniques should work as you try to relate your unit vectors. So looking at all these unit vector combinations, We'll start here with i hat crossed with i hat because none of i hat is perpendicular to i hat, which is what a cross product does. We end up getting a zero value for that cross product. And then if we start here with j hat crossed with i hat, we end up getting a value of negative k hat. And then k hat crossed with i hat, we end up with a value of j hat. For the next line here, let's have i hat crossed with j hat. We said that's a positive k hat by definition. And then a j hat crossed with j hat. They're parallel, so the cross product is zero. And then k hat crossed with, see we have all j's going here in the second row. This is going to equal a negative i hat. And then onto the final row, i hat crossed with k hat is equal to a negative j hat and then j hat crossed with a k hat that is equal to an i hat and then finally the parallel k hat crossed with k hat is equal to zero. Okay, so you notice on that diagonal, any of the parallel unit vectors have a cross product of zero. Another thing to notice is that while we ended up with a positive j hat from k hat cross i hat, when we flip those around on the opposite corner over here, we get a negative value. Okay, so order matters in these cross products. If you flip the order, you'll actually introduce a negative value to your computations. So one of the tools that we use in order to compute cross products in a very robust way, especially as we get into three-dimensional cross product, are what are called determinants. Okay, so a determinant is related to matrices, and essentially it's the determinant of a matrix. So if we look at notation, we often use, or we should use um, these kind of bent in rectangular brackets for defining a matrix. And then straight up and down lines are gonna, are gonna tell us we need to take a determinant. 
So once again, a matrix is a way we can express multidimensional information. A determinant is an operator of a matrix. And so if we have the cross product, R cross F, now I'm writing R cross F because it turns out that R cross S is also equal to a moment. And we'll get into the details of a moment in the next video. So we could write this. In the top line, we have an I hat, a J hat, and a K hat. It turns out that those are the terms in this determinant that give it its direction. A determinant doesn't automatically give you a vector, but if you have unit vectors in the top row, you will end up with a vector. So moving on to the next row, it's gonna be this first vector. It's three components, Rx, Ry, and Rz. And then the last row, it's going to be the force X, F, Y, and F, Z. I think one of the most robust ways to take determinants is to go ahead and recopy the first two columns. Okay, so that would be I hat, J hat, Rx, Ry, F, X, and F, Y. Okay, and then after we do that, we can take a look at the diagonals. Okay, so when we're talking about diagonals, essentially we're looking at this I hat, Ry, F, Z, J hat, R, Z, F, X, and the third one here, K hat, R, X, F, Y. And those three diagonals in this direction right here, those are our positive diagonals. And then in the opposite direction, going from kind of upper right down to left, we have these three diagonals, and those are our negative diagonals coming in this direction. Now hopefully that's a bit of a review because you've hopefully seen determinants before in um, something in, in, in some math class, maybe in high school, maybe in calculus in college. But another way that we can compute our matrices, you may be more familiar with this one, is that we take our matrix, and I'll recopy these values in here, I hat, J hat, and K hat, Rx, Ry, Rz, fx, fy, and fz. And just to emphasize that these are the exact same components we computed in chapter two. We're just not gonna be doing an operation on them. And so you may remember that if you wanted to compute your k hat component, that essentially you would zoom in just on this box here of terms and that you would cross um, just these two, kind of like we did in this previous diagram. And so in this case, we would have a positive diagonal, the product of um, Rx and Fy, and we'd subtract off of that this diagonal here, Ry, Fx. So that would be the negative component. And so you'd have k hat times each of those. In either case, if you went ahead and collected all these different terms, you'd find out that this determinant is equal to um, Ry, Fz in the i hat plus Rz, F x in the j hat plus now these are just my positive diagonals highlighted in yellow and the third one there rx f y in the k hat so to continue with the negative diagonals we end up with a negative we'll go with i hat j hat k hat order so r z times f y in the i hat and the j hat term is going to be an r x F, Z, that's going to be in the J hat. And then the last one here in the K hat is going to be a minus R, Y times F, X. And of course I could collect those, all my I hats, my J hats, and my K hats. And once again, this is the, de the vector determinant from that cross product. So one really cool thing about a determinant, it has the right-hand rule built into it. All of these positive and negative values actually come from the cross product of the components inside that term. 
Okay, so it, it fundamentally does an automatic right-hand rule for you if you take a determinant. So it's always a good tool to have in your pocket, even on a two-dimensional cross product, that you could back up your signs um, with the determinant in addition to do them, doing them manually. So that is a general overview on cross products. Hopefully most of these details are a review for you, but we're gonna be using cross products a whole bunch here in statics to take moments. And that'll be in the video coming up next.